Spots have with us, Naomi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Very good. So go ahead and introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. Um, well, my name is Naomi Sequeira, and I'm based in Sydney, Australia, and I'm an actor and presenter. Very cool. Very cool. So tell us a little bit. How did you get started in the whole acting industry? Tell us about that. Well, actually, when I was in high school, I believe it was year 10, so just translating it into American. I don't know if that's soft, sophomore year. Uh, you're around 15. Um, I went into drama class, and I was so shy and nervous. I'm definitely an introvert at heart. But my drama teacher really encouraged me to give it a go. And from there, it kind of sprouted. And over the years, I was like, oh, I really want to do this. And then after high school, I started pursuing it. Oh, that's exciting. And what was your first um, gig that you had? Like first audition, first gig, what was your first role? Well, it was in high school. It was, um, and that's honestly, besides my drama teacher, that was also another catalyst towards my career because I just, the experience of being on stage, I did a musical and I was actually kind of, um, playing the bitchy girl. Oh, <laughs> that must be fun. Being, it was so much fun. And, was like, it? I had never had any experience. So this was just, like, me being thrown in the deep end. I had auditioned and I got to sing and act and I, I sung Sweet Child of Mine. And I remember how nervous and I was shaking and I got the part, which was awesome. It was one of the leading parts. And then from that whole experience, you know, it wasn't just the performing, but it was the confidence that had come along and, um, have built up over the weeks and the friends that I've made. It made me just fall in love with the art. And then, yeah, so that's, that's how it all started. And that was my first ever audition. That's amazing. Okay, so we have to bring up, Thank obviously, our, our favorites is the Evermore Chronicles. Tell us about oh, that. Yeah. Please tell us about that. That was so good. And it's so bizarre looking back because that's when I first started acting. And you can probably tell when you watch it. No, that role. <laughs> Definitely grown since then. But it was an incredible role. And I'm so grateful and lucky um, to have landed that part because I was six months, uh, it was six months or eight months after high school. And, you know, I decided not to go to uni. I got offered a nine to five job. Um, and I turned that all down. So I turned down the comfortable and the resourceful lifestyle, I guess you could say. Um, and I, you know, chased my dreams. And like within eight months, I had landed a lead role on Evermore. And it was just a four part, uh, four episode series. So it was like a mini pilot in a way. Um, and then it got picked up for a proper season the following year. And that was my training because I'd never done any, any like acting courses or training or let alone had much experience in the field as it was only eight months into it. Well, so I was very grateful. That's cool. We should be honored because we're talking to the Supreme Everine. So <laughs> we feel honored. <laughs> oh my gosh, she's the cool. She's one of the coolest roles. And at times I'm like, man, I would love to just talk to her. Even like in my head, she's so real. Like she, yes. she exists out there. And there's definitely parts of me that obviously uh, Tara exists in me as well. And it's so crazy looking back because – I didn't realize at the time that Tara's an actual witch, but Disney obviously just didn't label it. And I'm so into witches and she's a writer and I love writing. And it was like, oh my gosh, like I felt like it was meant to be in the universe was like giving it to me as a gift and also like as a message saying, oh, you know what, in the future, you're going to be really interested in what she's interested as well. That's amazing. And she's like such a strong character and it's like, she's fearless. She so to be a, it's a person she's like fearless. that, that's really amazing. Yeah, and she was independent, you know, and like you said, fearless, and she was so hardworking, and I really admired that. And that, she was 15 in the show, so I'm like, man, she was total kick-ass, and what an honor to play such an amazing role as well. Oh, yeah. Tell us a little <laughs> bit about, like, the whole thing, like, the, the sewing and the thing and everything, like, and the predictions. What was um, that like? Like, it seems so cool, I mean, to do that. That was, like, cool. That's cool watching that. And you know what? It wasn't even like rehearsed or anything. So I rocked up to set and we were about to film the, you know, the sewing. And I'm like, how am I supposed to sew? Because, you know, I'm, I have no experience. This is a lead part, let alone I'm working with CGI. Um, and I'm like to the director, like, how am I supposed to do this? Like, because I don't have the, you know, traditional needle that goes into the tapestry. Yeah. He's like, oh, just have fun, make it up, do something with your hands. And I kind of just went with it and it started to become a thing. And every time I watch like a clip from back then of Tara doing the tapestry yeah. and sewing, it makes me laugh because it was literally just like, oh, just a white butterfly pass. 
which is a very good omen. Um, <laughs> uh, it's a very yeah. So I get distracted by animals. No, you're guys, right. But um, yeah, it was. It just makes me laugh because it was such a like uh, on the instinct kind of action, and we kind of just stood by it as well. And it was really cool to know that I could change the future. I mean, that was pretty awesome as well. And the whole cast and crew were just amazing to work with, and the set was. It's unbelievable. I was very, yeah, very lucky and very wow. grateful as well. Tapestry, oh tapestry. <laughs> yeah, tapestry, oh tapestry. Yeah, we were doing spells as well. I'm like, oh my gosh. And it, it's like so weird reflecting back and just seeing how much of Tara's life is evolved in my life right now. So, what yeah, is, just completely storyline, different storylines, but similar things. <laughs> totally meant, though, for you to play her character. I wouldn't picture anybody better than you to play her part. <laughs> Really? Oh, thank you very much. Yes. Thank you. Now, what did they do with the tapestry? Like, we want to know some behind the scenes. Did you get to keep I, any of the props? Like, anything? I, did you take anything home? And then, the, yeah, the tapestry. What did they do with it? I have no idea. I really don't know. And I don't live in England, so I can't really get any answers on that. And you know, I flew halfway around the world for that gig. But um, I really want to keep her jacket. You know that yes. varsity jacket? Yeah. I really want to keep it. And they, like, made it custom for me because it was too big when we were doing um, – when we were trying on the costumes before we started filming. And I just – they wouldn't let me. Oh, I kept on her stockings. But oh. they all ripped because my legs eventually – No. <laughs> but this is – that's your no, jacket, technically. Anything. It's your jacket. Please. You – no, you own it. But like, I like get picked up, and it well, it did, oh. but then Marvel's in the third season, and I was like, oh, I could have kept that jacket, but I think they're quite strict on it. It depends. Some gigs like give me stuff, and some gigs don't. Yeah, you know, maybe they'll put on auction one day. So yeah. we wanted to ask you. Um, obviously, you with Cameron. Um, they sometimes veered her yeah. veered Cameron with Bella a lot as well. Do you I know. know why? <laughs> Can you answer that question for us? Because obviously you guys were soulmates well, on the I show. Guess right. So how? You know what? From a from a realistic point, I think with Cameron, he just wanted to have options. Oh, okay. All <laughs> so right. From a writer's point, from a writer's point, though, so, and audience point, and TV point, I think they just wanted drama and drama. sense, mm -hmm. and you know, a love triangle is always very entertaining to watch. So. I can see what they did there. Um, but from a realistic point, I think he just wanted his options. Okay. <laughs> yes, sir. Okay. Options are good. Okay, okay. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. See, these are diehard Evermore questions. Everybody wants to know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you. Did you have a favorite episode that you filmed as well? Ooh, there were quite a lot, particularly in the in the picked up season 20, uh, bleh, 20 episode season. Apologies. Um, the teddy bear uh, episode. I remember in rehearsals, I thought the teddy bear was real, even though I could see the person behind it. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it was just so realistic and his eyes were so human-like. And so for me, that was such a surreal experience. Also, when we go back in time and it's called, I think, um, when we're like uh, the Stafford, I forgot what it's called. I apologize, it's been a long time, but I believe it was episode 10, um, where I think it was Esmeralda or Aunt Bridget turned everything into like sugar coated Evermore. Oh, the bell. And we're all polite. Okay, yes. Yeah, we're very like we're all polite and there was no bad things happening in Ev Evermore. And I really loved that episode because it gave me the opportunity to like juice up Tara yeah. um, in a different light. And it was so fun. It was just so fantastic. And the last few episodes were great. I just felt like the drama picked up and the suspense. And the darkness. I love when darkness occurs. Yeah, because <laughs> um, yeah, it just, it's so much more entertaining um, for me, at least personally, to watch. Uh, it was really great to see that contrast. And it was so lovely to work with different directors, too. Yeah. Yeah. And then tell me, do you still like keep in contact with the cast at this point? Or um, I don't keep in contact with the main cast, but I actually made best friends with one of the. Um, I think they were called the Crones, the Black Figures. Oh, yeah. The Crones. Yeah, yeah. Um, the youngest one, the Maiden, she's my best friend now. So we've gone, like, travelling overseas, oh, and we actually met at the rap party on the very last day. How and we cool. just felt so cool. So cool. And, you know, she was so nice. And, you know, when you just find someone that you just click with? Yeah, yeah she was yeah. one of those. Um, and now she's one of my best friends. I was actually just in England this year and no. in Ireland travelling with her. No yeah. way. That is crazy. Yeah. 
That is cool. Wow. Really cool. I'm very grateful for our friendship. That's nice. Well, we're glad that, like we said that you guys did Evermore because it's it's amazing. We wish it was like playing now because yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so amazing. It's fun. And then now we're going to talk about, because we saw you um, not too long ago on the Hallmark movie. You were on the Hallmark channel. Oh, my God. That's like in America. Yes. So that's it, Eric. That was so so much fun. That was like literally for me a paid holiday because we were just filming in CG. I was a supporting role, so I have a lot of days off. Um, It was just such an amazing time. And it was such a small cast. And so it was really nice. It kept everything quite grounded and humble. Um, so that was my first American film. However, I'm filming my first actual uh, bigger American film next year, oh, and I'm actually American in it, so I'm, that's going to be really exciting. Can you tell us about that? I was that? Trailing, well, in Paris. Yeah, well, I mean, I can't tell <laughs> too much about it, only because it hasn't been publicly released, but I can say it's for, because it's up online, it's called Mission Street, and I'm playing the role of Haley, which is the girlfriend of the lead character. Um, <laughs> where is it going to be airing too where is it going to air like where uh, no I actually don't know it's it's an American indie and I'm not sure where or okay. who is going to pick it up but it's a mixture between step up and eight miles so it has oh, that urban edge cool. and it's really it's probably like I've done some really cool projects but this one's like probably the coolest urban type of uh. project like the thugs and you know, there's a lot of dance and there's a lot of um, really cool on the edge, like on the edge characters involved. So. Do you dance as well? Because we know you're an actress and then you sing as well. Do you dance as well? Um, in this film, I won't be dancing. Are you all? Okay. The reason is so I don't know if they will put me in, but um, I do love to dance. I don't dance professionally, but I can take choreogra- um, choreography and, yeah. I still want to dance, but I enjoy it very much. Okay, cool. And then, so in Australia, what are you doing TV-wise? Like, you are, you're auditioning. What's your current projects in Australia? Tell us about that, because we do have a lot of people from Australia that watch, too. So we want to be informed. Oh, awesome. Yes. Absolutely. No, I've been very grateful, and um, really, work this year has been fantastic. I landed an episode on, on a new horror series which is so much fun. I'd never worked in blood. I've never worked in the horror thriller genre. And that's something I'd been manifesting towards. And it was a lead part in this episode. And pretty much it's a six episode series. Um, but each episode has a completely different storyline and a different cast. It's kind of like Black Mirror, except okay. the last episode intertwines all the five previous episodes into, yes, into that last episode. Um, and my role, she was just like a suburban teenager, life was a party, super fun, um, sensitive, but doesn't necessarily showcase it. And yeah, it's based on her and her sister. That's what I loved about it. Like it was so perfectly written um, and it was so great to like just immerse myself in that in that genre and really experience it because I had a lot of blood on me and yeah it was it was fun wow. and then I've got yeah it's That's cool. I don't know when it's coming out though okay. but who knows maybe next year I think I have a few projects coming out next year um but then I'm also working on a uh, mini pilot called Blood Sisters okay which again is a, it's a drama crime which is again one of the, like another genre I wanted to immerse myself in it's very different to Disney and, you know, that's really great for me as an actor to show my versatility and it's a lead part too. And um, my character is very strong willed. She definitely has, I feel like she has anger management issues as well. Um, she's come up from a tough background yeah. and it's based on three girls who are on the run because um, they've committed a crime, but in self defense. Exciting. Yeah. Exciting. And like we said, yeah, we said, you don't know when this airs. We're not sure. Sometime next sure. year. Well, the pilot, the pilot, I don't think will air unless it gets picked up into an actual TV series. So, okay. um, we'll see how that goes. But it's just, it's honestly one of my favorite scripts I've I've auditioned for this year, and I'm very grateful. And I've got Mission Street next year, which should be fun. And then I'm just doing a lot of like bits and bobs here and there. Um, I just got told yesterday, like with presenting and commercial work and stuff. So I've been very lucky with all the work that's flooding into in between the main projects. 
Good. Good for you. Yeah. Oh, that's exciting. Thank you. And then tell Thank us, you. so what's like a daily, like your daily schedule? What do you do every day? You do auditions? Just fill us in just like in your daily life, like in Australia, what do you do? Yeah, well, I live right across the beach, which I'm staring at right now. It's very oh, beautiful. beautiful. So in summer, which is coming around the corner, I usually wake up and I actually just jump into the ocean and wake up oh and go God, for lucky. a run and meditate. Yeah, and then if it's too cold, I'll do some yoga in my room to wake up. Um, and then, yeah, I'd have breakfast, um, meditate, and then I'll get straight into work. And my work differs. Sometimes I'm going to set. Sometimes I will have to learn lines before an audition. Um, and then some days I'll just be at home on my computer doing admin okay. pretty much the whole day. Yeah. Um, so it's, actually, when I'm reflecting back on it, it's a really good balance, actually, of, of work. But I'm definitely you know, always working on the hustle, um, but start my day off with, uh, I guess, the self-care ritual. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Of course. I agree with that. <laughs> that's the most yeah, that's the too. regular day. But then if I have a day off, I'll just go to the beach or hang out with friends um, and do whatever I can. And that I do, I do tarot readings once a week. So like for myself personally for the week ahead. Oh, you do? That's always fun. See, okay, yeah, we, we're yeah. very familiar with this, but I didn't know if you can do yourself like that. You can kind of tell your own, I thought, just for others. So you can do your own. Yeah. It's actually the other way around. They say you can't do it towards other people unless you have their permission. So oh, I've been really? a bit cheeky sometimes, particularly with guys. Oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and they've always been accurate. Like, Are you my card. Yeah, they have always been accurate. Confusing sometimes, but you can still see the sense of truth and clarity with what they're saying. But, like, with all the, I guess, bad guys in my life, my cards have always been honest about that. Really? <laughs> and it's, yeah, and it's, it's really freaky, too. And, like, everyone wants to know about their love life. It's really insane. Well, I just want to know about my health and career. Sometimes love life, but particularly when I'm dating someone, but yeah, like all my friends are like, oh, please, can you do my love reading and everything? I was like, okay. <laughs> so tell us, how did you get started with doing all of this? How did you get into this whole, all of this? You know, I'm not surprised that I did play a witch in Evermore. Like when I yes. reflect back on it, I was like, oh, I'm like, that makes sense. And like the fact that I rerouted to England and I did my ancestry test and guess what? I have 3% British in me. Really? And the further you go back, yeah, that means like pot. I feel like the more, like the lower percentage your ancestry test is, I French and um, British, it, I feel like you're connecting to your past. I feel like yes. I'm connecting to my past life and that was kind of like scientific proof. Um, as Yes, yeah, it got, yes. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, I'm very all things witchy and, and fun and just empowering. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And um, I'm definitely connected with the supernatural. I think I have that gift naturally, yeah. which sometimes doesn't feel like a gift. <laughs> um, and I've, I've obviously felt a lot of things and I've predicted things before they've actually happened. Oh, you have. So, mm -hmm. And I feel like, like, yeah, like a form of intuition I find is a form of divination. Just same like your tarot cards as well and certain animals that appear in my life and numbers as well. Um, it's, I just call it the universal language. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And so I work on my chakras and high vibrations. Yeah, and, exactly. That's exactly yeah. it. Okay. Yeah, we, yeah, absolutely. We see you see a lot of ladybugs too in different spiritual, like spirit guides. Oh, my God. You see a lot you of ladybugs. Something. Yeah, I do. You know what they mean? Good omens and good luck. And I think if you also set the intention of a certain color, a certain number, or a certain animal that pops into your life, you start insert that um intention and it appears into your life you know what why it's there and with ladybugs it's always good luck and I've had a lot of great like I just booked four jobs yesterday um and, and now I'm having this wonderful interview and like I'm just so I feel like I've had a lot of abundance come into my life recently That's and I'm great. very grateful I'm not surprised that every job I'm booking is aligned with my morals and my values and my my vision within my career so like